Yo, you wanna learn how to do a fucking yo-yo design? I'm a teacher, motherfucking bitch ass. I'm not gonna feed you any damn numbers, I'm not your mama. Pull your fucking pants up and figure that shit out. I will be demonstrating with SolidWorks. This is not a SolidWorks tutorial. I am not teaching your dumbass any SolidWorks today. We are looking at the big picture. You wanna learn how to make a yo-yo the right way? Look up Zach Lerner, get the fuck out of here. You wanna learn how to make a yo-yo fucking dope? Stick with me. Step 1. If you have already opened your CAD software, you are fucking up. Get out some pen and paper, your Palm Pilot, whatever. Put on that thinking cap and think. What are you making? Why are you making it? And write that shit down. Now. What you just wrote down are your design notes. This will be the foundation of your yo-yo. Change them if you need to. Always refer back to them. A singular vision is what will make your yo-yo fucking cool. Step two, we're gonna draw some lines. It's not gonna look like a yo-yo. We're gonna give each line a name and understand what they mean to the design as a whole. I made up some of the names myself, deal with it. First, let's break this shit up in half. Profile and the cup. If you don't know what those are, close your web browser. I don't want you making yo-yos right now. You brought a bearing seat, right? Go get one, I, I don't have all fucking day. We are not fucking with this shit at all or changing anything. Uh, you have to do your own damn homework there. So, the profile starts right after the guts. Right here. We are going to call this line, the slope. This line goes a long way to determining how well your yo-yo will maintain plane and handle anything off-plane. If your yo-yo is Tilty McClown shoes, this is probably where you fucked up. This next line here, we are calling the catch, because it's what touches your hand first when you catch the yo-yo. The relationship between the slope and the catch are what define a yo-yo's shape archetype. Because it forms the outer diameter, the shape of the catch is crucial to weight distribution. Did I just blow your goddamn mind? But I thought the cup was the weight dis- Just shut the fuck up when I'm talking, it's both, motherfucker. The profile informs the weight as much as the cup. So, last thing about the catch. It is the most critical factor in ergonomics. If you wince every time you catch your yo-yo, this is probably where you fucked up. So, between the slope and the catch, that's our profile. It looks... Incredible, right? Fucking amazing. Let's put the cup together next. Like the profile, we'll start from the inside. Right here in the middle, this is the hub. You want to impress some cuties with some finger spins? You want to minimize center weight? This is where all that good shit can happen. Coming right off the hub, we're calling this line here the wall. In most cases, it's more or less parallel to the slope, or going the same general direction to the outer diameter at least. Frankly, the wall is boring as shit, save for one thing. Wall thickness. You want to be a big performance hotshot, you gotta know the limit of your material and stick close to it. The last line here isn't actually a single line. It's more of a sort of concept in weight distribution, and we're going to call it the chunk. If you drew every other line we've discussed so far within pretty reasonable parameters and then close up the sketch, your yo-yo will not weigh jack shit. It will not be the weight of what a yo-yo should be. To hit your target weight, you have to actually go out of your way to place the remainder of your target weight somewhere, somewhere in the body. Most of the time, you can just say, fuck it, put all that leftover shit on the rim, and be home in time for dinner. Mom made meatloaf, hell yeah. You have a yo-yo that spins. If you want to get weird, you can distribute the chunk at the center, or maybe even between the rim and the center. That's your problem, not mine. Part 3. Weight distribution is your bread, your butter, your meat, your potatoes, it's your whole motherfucking meal. Jesus Christ, I am hungry right now. Now, I'm gonna spare you the birds and the bees moment of inertia talk. You've heard it before. Rim weight, make yo-yo spin gooder. Thank you, Leonhard Euler, you magnificent son of a bitch. While we're talking science, let me offer a dissenting opinion to conventional wisdom. Trying to predict your yo-yo's performance from figure shat out of your CAD software is useless voodoo for fucking goofballs. Seeing a big ass number for your moment of inertia when you look at the weight properties of a single half means exactly jack shit. 
briefly consider the sheer quantity of factors completely ignored by this figure and you'll see what I mean. If your profile sucks ass and introduces a shitload of string friction, no amount of room weight will save your stupid ass design from mediocrity. Again, review your initial design notes and think hard about if your weight distribution serves your vision. Part 4 You ever pick up a yo-yo and just want to hurl that shit into the motherfucking sun because it just doesn't feel right? Don't let that be your yo-yo. Pay attention to ergonomics. Yo-yos are designed to be held in your hand, and if your design feels like shit to hold in your hand, then it is a failure, full stop. I shouldn't have to say this outright, but don't make your fucking rims sharp. Don't make your rims sharp. Stop making your rims sharp. The outermost diameter generally means very little to the size of your catch zone and only factors into string friction in extreme cases. You can afford to round out that corner some more, I promise. But ergonomics do not start and end at the outer rims. The inner profile plays a significant role in how your yo-yo feels in the hand as well. A super low-ass sunken-in inner profile next to high, narrow rims makes the middle finger sit way below the others, causing strain, while the low surface area of the outer rim causes pain on the catch. Imagine what a pain in the ass this abomination would be to throw. Welcome to 2007, bitch, it's the Envy. A design with a shallow inner profile and broad rims feels like a can of soda on a string. What kind of pervert plays with that? Welcome back to 2007, bitch, it's the Pyro. Don't forget that your yo-yo has to fit into a human hand. You forget that, you fucked up. Part 5. Congratulations! Your design is complete and... Wait a minute. This looks fucking hideous. Your yo-yo plays fine, but it wouldn't last five fucking minutes on a playground because all the kids would make fun of it. And they'd be right. What went wrong? Usually, you either thought way too much or didn't think enough. Did you consider that the transitions between the basic lines are just as important as the lines themselves? Were you paying attention to proportions? Does the design look like a cohesive whole, or is it on some Frankenstein's goddamn monster shit? I can ask these questions all day, but I cannot teach good taste. As always, look back at those design notes and decide if the results are true to the vision. Part 6 Take every single thing you have done, every word of your design notes, every point you placed in your sketch, every gram of aluminum, and question it. Why is that line there, straight and not curved? I set out to make a competitive model, but what kinds of tricks am I targeting? The point of these questions is not to pat yourself on the ass and feel great about your precious little design. The answers themselves might be uncomfortable. They might mean something needs to change. Good. That's improvement. That's iteration. That's making the best goddamn yo-yo you can possibly make because that's the motherfucking way your fucking Uncle Jamie taught you to do it, goddammit. You keep on questioning everything, you keep on making it better, and you get a rhythm going. Don't lose your rhythm. You lose your rhythm, you fucked up. And that's the whole rant. Thank you so much for watching this whole video. It got super long. I am shocked at the runtime, as I sh am sure you are as well. There is more content like this in the works. To further support this kind of content creation, because I'm finding it's something I really enjoy doing, um, I have started a Kofi page. What Kofi is, is it's a way to give back to creators in a very small way, because I don't feel like this is the kind of channel that merits like say a patreon or something like with consistent recurring support so kofi is just a little way to say hey thanks you know toss a coin to your witcher that kind of thing so if you enjoyed consider contributing that way or by just engaging with the video that's the best way to let me know that this was meaningful to you in some way so i gotta say it like comment subscribe see you next mission